Let's use master theorem to solve the recurrences for the merge sort algorithm and the binary search algorithm. Let's first deal with the merge sort recurrence. T of n is twice of T of n by 2 plus C times n. The value of a here is 2. The original array was divided into two subarrays. Each subarray was half of the size of the original array. So b is 2. And the amount of work done for merging together the two sorted subarrays was proportional to n. It was some constant multiplied by n. So f of n is c times n. What is n to the power log base b of a? It's n to the power log base 2 of 2, which is n. Now if we compare this function with f of n, both functions have the same rate of growth. So we are in case 2 of master's theorem. And the solution to such recurrences is given by t of n is theta of n to the power of log base b of a times log n. So the solution to this recurrence is t of n is theta of n to the power log base b of a is just n times log n. So the merge sort algorithm runs in time theta of n log n. If we apply master theorem to this binary search recurrence, we have a equal to 1 because we divide the original problem into one subproblem after checking the middle element. We basically discard one half of the array, so we just have a, you know, half of the array to deal with when we recurse. So a is 1, and because the size of the subproblem is half of that of the original problem, b is 2, and the amount of work done in partitioning this problem into this one sub-problem and then combining the result. That work is a constant amount of work. So n to the power log base b of a is n to the power log base 2 of 1, which is n to the power 0 because 2 to the power 0 is 1. If we compare the value, if, if we compare this function, this constant function 1 with f of n, f of n is also a constant. So again both these functions have the same rate of growth. And therefore again we are in case 2 of master theorem. So t of n is given by theta of either of those functions, f of n or n to the power log base b of a times log n. So we can say that t of n is theta of 1 times log n, which is just log n. Note that if we had changed If we had changed the binary search recurrence to be t of n is t of n by 3 plus c. So let's say we change the value of b in this recurrence. Instead of 2, we make it 3. Or we make it 4. 
Now, conceptually, what does it mean to do that in the algorithm? Well, it just means that instead of partitioning, um, it, instead of looking at the middle element, you look at, you divide the array into three parts, three equal parts, instead of two equal parts, and you look at the boundary elements of those three parts. So you look at the, so if, if this array has a length of n, you look at the n by third element, and you look at the 2n by third element, and you check whether the value you, you're searching for is less than the value of this element, or whether it's whether it lies between the values of these two elements, or whether it is greater than the value of this element. And depending on which of those three conditions is true, you recurse or you you, you focus on that particular subarray. So after these one or you know two or three comparisons, you can basically divide your original problem into a sub problem of size one third that of the original problem. So likewise, you could think of dividing the array into four parts instead of two or three. But does it make any difference to the asymptotic complexity? Is it that by dividing the array into three parts, we're going to get, we're going to do better than the algorithm which divided the array into two parts? Well, let's see. Maybe master, maybe master theorem can help here. Let's see what would have happened if we had chosen a different value of b. So, keeping the value of a the same, if we had changed the value of b, this base would have changed. But because a would have remained 1, since we are ultimately recursing into one subarray in binary search. Okay, maybe it wouldn't have been called as binary search in that case. But anyway, if we had recursed into a single subproblem, then it doesn't matter what this base is, the power of n here would have been zero. Right? Because whatever be the base, it could have been any b greater than 1 b to the power 0 is going to be 1. So n to the power log base b of a would have been 1, irrespective of what this number would have been. Would have been 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, as long as it was some constant. n to the power log base b of a would have had the same rate of growth as t of n, which is c. And therefore, the solution to the recurrence would have remained t of n is theta of log n. In a similar way, we could have thought of dividing the array in merge sort not into two subarrays but into three subarrays, sorting each of those subarrays recursively and then combining or merging the results of those three subarrays. We did look at the recursion for that when we discussed the recursion tree method. The recurrence there was t of n is three was three times t of n by three plus c times n. And we saw that the complexity of the algorithm remained unchanged by that. Now let's try to see whether that's also derivable from master theorem. So let's say we divide the array into um, a parts in merge sort. So a could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4. But the general form of the recurrence will remain t of n will be a times t of n by a plus c times n. Right? a could be 2 or it could be 3 or 4. 
But if we divide the array into four parts, each subarray will be one fourth of the size of the original array. So this number is going to track this number. These two numbers are going to be the same. If we compute log base b of a here, it would just be log base a of a. Right? If we had gone with any any other value of a, we would have got n to the power log base a of a here, and that would have been n. So comparing it with f of n, which is c times n, we would have got the same rate of growth. This means the complexity of merge sort would have remained theta of n log n. Even if we had made these changes to the merge sort algorithm of dividing the array into not into two parts but into three or four or five or ten or whatever constant number of parts in every step. So this shows that even generic versions of the merge sort algorithm or the binary search algorithm, generic extensions of these algorithms have the same asymptotic time complexity as the implementations that we have seen. And we, are, we were able to conveniently show that by using master theorems.